uh, part four today. We'll conclude. We'll conclude with this message today. Turn with me to Romans chapter eight. Romans chapter eight. And uh, if if we can get just uh, just the back uh, house lights here, that would be wonderful. Um, even I need a little bit more light up here. Um, so, anyways, Romans chapter eight, verse twenty eight. Through 39 is what we're going to read today. It'll be on the screen if you want to follow that way. It says this in verse uh, 28. We know that all things, how many things? All things work together for the good of those who love God. Do you love God this morning? Amen. So if you love God, my scripture says right there that all things will work for together for your good. Amen. Those who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, so that he that he would be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, are you predestined? Yes, those he predestined, he also called. So now you're called. And those he called, he also, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. Verse 31. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Come on, somebody. He did not even spare his own son, but offered him up for us all. How will he not also with him grant us everything? Who can bring an accusation against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who, 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 is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is the one who died, but even more has been raised. He also is at the right hand of God and intercedes for us. Come on, that's powerful right there. He intercedes for us. Who can separate us from the love of Christ? Can affliction or anguish or persecution, famine, nakedness or danger or sword, as it is written, because of you, uh, we are being put to death all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than victorious. Come on, somebody. Say, we're more than victorious. Through him who loved us, for I am persuaded, verse 38, that not even death or life, angels, rulers, things present or things to come, hostile powers, height or depth, or any other created thing will have the power to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. My Lord, there is so much right there in that scripture. Let's pray real quick. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this morning. We thank you, Father God, for teaching us something new today. We thank you, Father God, for for tuning our ears to you, God, to receive your word, Father. Lord, I pray, God, that this word, God, would go forth and do great and mighty things in our life, Father. So, Lord, we receive it now. We're grateful now. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen, 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 amen. Now, before we get uh, started into really the meat uh, of the message this morning, I, I want to encourage you to, today that I, I want you to start thinking differently, all right? Thinking differently. I want you to start thinking a whole new way starting today, that you are not going to think the same way that you've always thought, but you are going to think differently. And uh, some of you th- thought I was going to say thunk. Don't think the same way. You always thunk, all right? But we, we are going to change the way that we think today, okay? Um, because, you see, if you can get your thinking straight, you can get your life straight. Can I be honest with you? If you can get your thinking straight, you can get your life straight. I don't know how many battles, if not all, I've discovered start in my mind. Right? Think about it. They start in our mind. And so if we can get our thinking straight, we can get our lives straight. Amen? So now in life, you know, things, things truly do get complicated at times. Things can seem out of whack uh, fairly quickly. Uh, but, but I've come to discover this. It's not what I do about those times. It's how I think in the midst of those times. Because there's going to be troubling times, there's going to be chaotic, complicated things that take place. And it's not about what takes place, not what about what happens, it's about how I think about it, okay? Because a lot of times we, we act upon what we think, right? We don't act necessarily upon the situation, we act about what's going on in our minds. And so if we see chaos and trouble, we're going to think of a solution or think about that, and that's the route that we're going to go on. And so today, we've got to transform the way that we think because there's a right way to think and there's a wrong way to think, right? That's pretty obvious, but it's true. Because a lot of times, we get stuck in the wrong way of thinking, and we don't even know it. But we've got to be in the right 
way of thinking. So here's the truth. Your thoughts matter more than you can imagine. Your thoughts matter way more than you can imagine. I can almost say most of the time your thoughts are really going to control you. Okay? And so it, our thoughts, the way we think, is very, very important. There's significance behind the way that we think. There's significance behind what, how we act upon what we think. So here's what I've come to learn. Our lives will move in the direction of our strongest thoughts. You need to write that down. Our lives will move in the direction of our strongest thoughts. Okay? And so if your strongest thought is all about negativity, then guess what? You're going to move into negativity. Okay? You're going to act upon negativity. You think about many different, I can give you examples all day long, but that's very true. Our lives will move in the direction of our strongest thoughts. Look at Romans 8 again, but go back to verse 5, through, five and 6. It says this in Romans 8, verse 5 through 6. For those who live according to the flesh, think about the things of the flesh. There it is right there. But those who live according to the Spirit, think about the things of the Spirit. For the mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset of the Spirit is life and peace. Life and peace. So the title of this message this morning is, I Am Positive. I am positive. We've talked about I am optimistic. We've talked about I am thankful. We've talked about I am encouraged. And now today we're going to conclude with I am positive. So listen, the, the inner thoughts that, that, that we have all the time, you know that, you know, we got this inner dialogue that's taking place, right? Uh, and, and, you know, like the old cartoons where you had the little devil on this shoulder and then the little angel on this shoulder and one saying, do this and do that, and then the other one saying, and then, the, you know, the little cartoons like, I, I don't know, I, I guess I'll do this, and then, you know, like the one or the other gets upset or whatever. And listen, in our minds, we have a little dialogue that's happening at all times. We do. Just like right now, as I'm speaking to you, as I'm talking to you about that, you literally have dialogue happening in your mind right now. And so what, what happens is we, we listen sometimes to the wrong voice, the wrong dialogue. And so how do we train ourselves to listen to the right voice? Because at times, if we're honest, we believe that we're listening to the right voice, but it's actually the wrong voice. Hello, have you made decisions and have you made mistakes thinking that you heard from the voice of the Lord, but it was actually yourself or it was actually the enemy or it was actually someone, someone else or something else? I can tell you right now from, in my life, I have done that very thing where I thought it was the voice of God. I thought it was the right voice. Voice, but it wasn't. And, and, and then we learn from those mistakes, but we also learn how to listen to the right voice, right? We learn how to listen to the right voice. So the right voice right now is the Holy Spirit that's trying to speak to you. The wrong voice right now is your stomach that's saying, I'm hungry, where am I going to lunch after church, right? That's the wrong voice to be listening to right now. But the right voice is, is, is listening to the Holy Ghost today, right? And so uh, there's always this dialogue that's happening in our minds. Romans 12, 2 says this, Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may discern what is good, pleasing, and the perfect will of God. So you want to know how to think right? You want to know what voice to listen to? Then the scripture says this, renew your mind. Renew your mind. Because your mind, your, your, your brain, your thought, they're, they're, it's going to get juggled up at times. It's going to get chaotic at times. And so we have got to constantly be in the state and position of renewing our minds. Let me tell you, every day you need to renew your mind. You need to remove, renew your mind daily because there is so much that goes on up here. And there's even a lot that goes on up here during the night when you're sound asleep. Come on, you know that. Your dreams and different things that happen, different things that take place, thoughts that you have that you didn't even know existed or didn't even know you had. Things take place in your mind. And so every day, we need to start out fresh, renewing our mind, amen? Because our mind is truly a battlefield. And if we want to be positive, we got to think positive, right? And so how do we think positive? We got to renew our mind. So the, the scripture says, so that we may discern what is good, pleasing, and the perfect will of God. 
Man, I don't know about you, but I want to live in that. I want to live in the good, pleasing, perfect will of God, right? I don't want to live in any other place but that right there. And that is positive to me. That is a good place to be. That is a positive place to be in. And so therefore, if I want to be there, I've got to renew my mind. You see, so much of life isn't about what happens to you, but rather how you think about what happens to you. It's not so much about what happens to you, but it's about what you think about what happens to you. So there's three things today that I want to give you, three things that I want to teach you, three ways to stay positive. And I believe that this will really, I believe it, this will really help us out in life. And these are simple things, but they're real things. Three ways to stay positive. Number one is this, coming right out of the Word of God. We must take every thought captive. Number one, Take every thought captive. If you're struggling with different things in your mind and you've got stuff that's always going on up here, whatever it may be, you have got to learn in the matter of seconds to take that thought captive. When your mind is wanting to go one direction that is not of the Lord, that is not pleasing to God, you have got to discern that. And how does that come? By renewing your mind, right? So you, can, you, you gain that discernment by renewing your mind. You've got to renew your mind, gain that discernment, and when that thought comes, you have got to take it captive immediately. Because if you dwell on that thought, eventually that thought will become action. Okay? And then you will be doing the very thing that you thought you weren't going to do. But you did it because you didn't take that thought captive. Especially when it comes to sin. You want to know how to overcome sin? You take the thought captive. Sin starts with the thought. It's true. Sin will start with the thought. So instead of saying, oh, I just can't believe I just messed up today. and Oh, I shouldn't have done. No, no. If you would have just taken that thought captive immediately, that thing would have never taken place. You would have never done X, Y, and Z if you would have just uh, take that thought captive. And so I want to encourage you, it's not easy. This is something that you have to train yourself in. This is something that you have to train your mind in, your spirit man in, is learning how to take that thought captive because your thoughts will truly control you. Amen? And so we have got to learn how to take our thoughts captive. So what if you're telling yourself lies all the time simply because you're not taking your thoughts captive? A lot of people are living that way. Let's read 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians verse 10. Uh, excuse me, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through 5. It says this, For though we live, we live in the body, we, we do not wage war in, in an unspiritual way, since the weapons of our warfare are not worldly, but are powerful through God for the demolition of strongholds. We demolish arguments and every, here it is, high-minded thing that is raised up against the knowledge of God, taking every thought captive to obey Christ. So when we take that thought captive, we are now standing in the obedience of Christ. That's what that means right there. And so think about it. If we don't take that thought captive, we are not standing in the obedience of Christ. Now, that's a dangerous place to be in, right? I want to be obedient to the Lord, obedient to his word, obedient to what the Holy Spirit says. I don't want to be in disobedience or have a spirit of disobedience. All because I didn't take that thought captive. And so listen, we need to be obedient to the Lord, right? We need to be standing in obedience so it starts with taking every thought captive. When you take the phrase every thought there in that scripture, uh, in the text there, you can do a study on it. It literally means this. Every thought means negative, critical, condemning, hateful, fearful, worried. Every thought. That's what that means right there. That's what that contains right there. So every negative thought every critical thought, every condemning thought, every hateful thought, every fearful thought, and every worried thought. Now that's a big one right there. All of those are important, but that's a big one right there. Even worry, even worry can get you outside of the obedience that you need to be in. So we got to learn how to take thoughts captive so that we aren't standing in disobedience, right? So if any, if, if any of those kind of thoughts come to mind, we have the ability and the authority to take it captive and to teach it. It goes beyond. 
We can take it that captive, and then it says in the scripture there, captive to obey Christ. So we can teach it to obey Christ. We can teach our thoughts to obey Christ. That is a powerful thing. We have been given the authority not to just take the thought captive, but we have been given the authority to grab a hold of that thought, captivate it, and say, now I submit my thoughts back to you, Jesus, to obey you. Isn't that powerful right there? And that is the way we need to be living. Instead of getting all caught up in fear and worry and everything else that I said, critical, all that kind of stuff, we can take that thought captive and say, you know what? No, I'm turning it back around. I'm submitting it to you. And I'm submitting it in obedience. And wow, what does that do for us? Amazing things, right? Amazing things. You want to know how to stay positive? Take every thought captive. Take every thought captive. Amen? Come on, somebody say amen to that. And number two, we have to recognize the best in others. You want to know how to stay positive? Recognize the best in others. Call forth the greatness out of others. You know, I, that's one of the things that, that me personally, I try to do as much as I can. And it's not easy at times, and we forget to, and we don't, we don't do those kind of things often. But even if you can't stand the person, we still have to recognize the best in others. And even if you love the person, you recognize the best within them. Let me tell you something. There is, there is great things hidden within each and every one of us. Amen? And it's up to us as brothers and sisters in Christ to recognize it and pull it out of them, right? Because there is greatness and there is destiny and there is purpose that is hidden within each and every one of us that a lot of times we ourselves are not going to open up. But if someone else would come towards us and recognize those things and pull it out, come on somebody, then we're walking in our purpose, then we're walking in our destiny. So it's important that if you want to stay positive in your life, that you look for people and that you pull out the positive great things about them. If you're one to always talk bad about someone and be negative about someone all the time and have nothing good to say about them all the time, no wonder you're never positive. Because you don't even know how to see the positive in others. And so we have got to recognize that with our eyes and even our spiritual eyes. Recognize the greatness. Recognize the positive things and pull that out. Are we all full of junk and bad things at times? Yes. Do we all have our flaws and our mistakes, things that we don't like about each other? Yes. But we look past all of that and we pull out the greatness. You know, that reminds me exactly of what Jesus did for you and me. He looked past your sin. He looked past your mistake. He looked past your flaws. He looked past whether you thought you were handsome or ugly or whatever. He looked past all of that and said, there is something within them that I need to use. And that is the same exact way that we should be operating and living as brothers and sisters in Christ. Excuse me. We need to be pulling out the greatness of one another. If we are always talking negative and pulling down one another, we are not operating with the spirit of gentleness like the word of God says. We need to be operating in the gentleness and pulling out greatness. Amen? Pulling out greatness. So we got to encourage one another just as we talked about a few weeks ago. we got to uplift one another. Right? we got to do the very things that God has called us to do. You know, that's what I love about every single person in this church, especially those that are serving, is that someone, whether it was me or Melissa or anybody else, saw the greatness within and pulled it forth out of you. Just like my, my brother Mark right back there, who's, who's, who's uh, handling, moderating Facebook right now for us. He wanted to serve, didn't know what to do, didn't want to be in the spotlight, so we saw the greatness within him. We knew that he had a gift. We knew that he had an anointing. We called it forth out of him and said, hey, here's a great position for you. And let me tell you, he is a beast at it. But what if, what if I would have said, eh, there's really not much he can do? What if I would have said that? First of all, I wouldn't be much of a pastor, would I? But secondly, I wouldn't be operating the way that I need to be operating as a man of God, right? And as a child of God. Okay, yeah, I saw he didn't want to be in the spotlight. 
So the Lord gave me an idea, right? And I pulled that greatness out of him. And listen, that is what you need to be doing with everyone else. Pull that greatness out of them. You see a gift within them? Pull it out of them. Say, I need you. God needs you. I need to pull that thing with, out of you. And listen, that is what we got to do. That's what we got to do. When Nathan and Taylor came to the church, and no, 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 no speaking against any other church, but, but they were mistreated at their former church. They were pushed back and, and this and that and, and hurt and all that. And listen, we saw that. They came. They, they wanted to be a part. I said, man, you guys got an anointing. You guys got, got a gift. Man, we pulled it right out of them. And, and listen, we're going to continue to pull it out of them, just like we're going to continue to pull it out of each and every one of you. We're going to pull forth that greatness. Amen? And so that, you want to know how to stay positive? Do that very thing. Man, I am more happier not when good things happen to me, but when good things happen to other people. That's what really makes me happy. That's what really gives me joy. When I see someone that's messed up, and they come in and encounter Jesus and start living for him and change their whole life and start serving the church, start doing all, that is what makes me happy. That's what really fills me with joy. And listen, you have the responsibility to do that very thing. And man, let me tell you, it will, it will fill you up like you wouldn't believe. The truth is, though, nobody is perfect. No church is perfect, whether you believe it or not. We're not perfect. No pastor is perfect. Oh, my God. No pastor. I ain't perfect. All right? Don't ever think I am. I ain't. But listen, even in our imperfections, there are positive things to discover. Even in our imperfections, there are positive things to discover. The things that we remember about others often stem from our thoughts about them. The things that we remember are often stemmed out of the things that we've thought about them. So if you think positive things of them, you will speak positive things of them, right? If all you think about is when you think about that person is, oh, God, negative, 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 then listen, you're never going to speak positive, life-giving things to them. But if you think positively, man, you will speak those things out into existence. Amen? So as believers and, and as a church, we have got to stop looking, excuse me, we have to start looking past the faults of others and pull the greatness out within. We've got to start looking past the faults and start pulling out the greatness because we all have faults and we all have greatness, okay? So we've got to do that. Each person in this room has so much to be unlocked within. There is hidden greatness inside of each and every one of you, and I want to let you know that because some people don't believe them, that, that about themselves, but it's facts and it's true. There is hidden greatness within each and every one of you in this room, and it's up to the people that are sitting next to you to pull it forth out of you, to encourage you, and and say, hey, I see that in you. Let me pull it out. And listen, that is what we're going to be known for at this church. We're not going to be known for just a bunch of people that come and sit and take up space and leave. We're going to be known as a church that, that, that calls forth purpose and destiny and anointing and calling and all those kind of things. And pulls it forth out, man, so that you can be used in a mighty way. There's nothing that will give you more joy than that right there. So I've learned this. When I need to be filled with positivity, I find someone. When, I'm, when, I'm, when I need something positive in my life, man, I will find someone. I'll text someone. I'll call someone and encourage them, uplift them, share a word with them, whatever it may be. And so listen, at times, if you're not feeling very positive in life, or you're, not, you're feeling kind of down and out, man, just, just call someone up. Just, just talk to someone and just pull that out of them. You might not like them but you still got to do it because there's nothing like it, man. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like seeing someone walk in their purpose for the first time. Man, that is so amazing when you see that take place, when someone finally begins to walk in their purpose. And, and it's not that you can pat yourself on the back and say, I did that, and so that you can say, man, thank you, God, for doing that. And thank you, Lord, for using me to pull that out of them. Because everybody else looked past them. Everybody else only saw their faults. Everybody else only saw their mistakes. Everybody else only saw the outward man. But man, the Bible says that God looks at the heart. And that is the exact spiritual eyes that we need to have. We need to be looking at the heart. Amen? Come on, somebody. So number one, again, take every thought captive. Number two, recognize the best in others. And number three is this. Remember what the Word says. Remember what the Word says. So... What does the word say? Well, 
obviously it says many, many great things, but let's go back into our text this morning. Let's go back into the word that we just read. This is all about you, okay? Romans 8, verse 28 through 39 that we read together earlier. The first thing that we see in verse 28 is that we see that it says all things work together for us. And listen, that is something that encourages me right there. That's something that just fills me with positivity right there. I have positive thoughts when I see that, that all things work together. All things. So even those messed up things at work, even those messed up things in your family, even those messed up things that exist out there, all things, the scripture says, all things work together for the good. Amen? Work together. In verse 29, we're going to go verse to verse. Verse 29, it says this, that we are reminded that we are made in his image. We're made in his image. In verse 29, in, in Jesus, Jesus is perfect. So we are made in the perfect image of Christ. Are we perfect? No. But we're made in the perfect image of Christ. Amen? So when I look at you, I see Jesus. Because we are made in his image. So this is, this is for, for those that are struggling with insecurities out there. Especially a lot of times we used to help teenagers with their insecurities. Be, and, and girls that would say, I'm, I'm too fat or I'm too ugly or I'm too this, I'm too that. No, no, no. You're made in the perfect image of God. So he's already made you perfect. So you look perfect. You might not think you look perfect. You might not, like, you might, the outward appearance of what you see might not be perfect in your eyes. But when Jesus made you, he made you perfect. And that is how we are to see one another. In the perfect image of Christ. Amen. Verse 30. And then says, he called, justified, and glorified us. Man, isn't that powerful? So he called us. He justified, and then he glorified us. Man, that makes me happy right there. That gives me some positivity in my life. That he called me, despite me, despite my mistakes, despite my sin, despite my errors, he called me, and he also Went beyond that, he justified, and then he glorified. Amen? Verse 31 says that God is for us. So nobody or nothing can be against us. And that's pretty positive right there. Nothing, nobody can be against you. Nothing, nobody. Because why? God is for you. He is already for you. So when everyone else around you is not for you, when you feel like nobody is for me and everybody is against me, you need to remember that God is still for you. God is not against you, but he is for you. Amen? Verse 32, he gave us his son, but it goes, it goes beyond that saying, how will he not grant us everything we need. Man, he's going to grant you everything that you need. That's a pretty positive thing to think about. That's a pretty positive statement right there. Not only did he gave me Jesus, which is all that I need, it's more than I need, but then it goes beyond that and says he's going to give you everything that you need. Man, that fills me with some positivity in my life. See, you want to know how to be positive? You just dive into a scripture like this. There is nothing negative about this scripture. There is nothing defeating about this scripture. This is life-giving, encouraging, positive. And that's the way it should make us feel. In verses 33 and 34, we can't be accused or condemned because we're God's elect. And he intercedes for us. When you feel like, man, nobody cares about you, nobody's even praying for you, God is. You are his elect, and he is interceding on your behalf. He's interceding with the Father on your behalf. So someone, at all times, is always praying for you. Isn't that awesome? We might not have everybody else around us praying for us, but it's good to know that Jesus is interceding 
on our behalf at all times. And that gives me something positive to think about. Verses 35 and 36, nothing, nothing can separate us from God's love. And it tells you all those things, but nothing, and I mean nothing, can separate you from the love of Jesus. Man. So no matter how messed up we get at times, he still loves you. No matter if you think you've committed the worst of worst of worst sins, he looks past that and says, I forgive you and I love you. He loves us so much. And that is something positive, amen? Verse 37, I love that part. It says, we are more than victorious. So we're not just victorious, which is amazing, but we are more than victorious. What does that even mean? So we don't only just have the victory, we have more than the victory. Wow. That is really positive. That gives me a lot of joy that I've got the victory. And not only do I got the victory, but I got more than the victory. I am made more victorious, amen? I'm not just victorious in some things, but I'm victorious in all things, and I am more than victorious, amen? Man, that gets me excited. That gets me joyful. That lifts me up. It makes me feel really positive. Verses 38 and 39, another reminder. So he tells us once already, and then he goes another step further again and reminds us one more time. Hey, just in case you didn't catch it the first time a few verses before, nothing has the power to separate you from the love of God. Nothing has the power to separate you. I, I know I told you once before, son. I, I know I told you once before, daughter, but I've got to remind you again because my love is so great. My love is so big. My love is so powerful. My love is so withstanding. My love is so strong. I love you so, 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 so much. My love is there for you. And nothing, nothing has the power to separate you from my love. Nothing has the power to separate my love from you. There's one more incredible scripture that I want to read. And I believe that this is a prophetic scripture for your life right now. Romans chapter 9, just go over one chapter. Verse 17. It says, I raised you up for this reason. You can stand to your feet right now. I raised you up for this reason. So that I may display my power in you. So he's raising you up to display his power within you. And that my name may be proclaimed in all the earth. So he's raising you up, son. He's raising you up, daughter, to display his power. And how does his power be displayed? Because you're going to proclaim his name. So that I may use you to proclaim my name in all the earth. In all the earth. Your salvation, your healing, your freedom, the things that God has done in your life, they aren't just for you. To just so you can hold to yourself and say, thank you, Jesus. Man, those things are for other people. So that his power may be displayed. I got saved. You should have seen how a mess I was, men and women. You should have seen this. But God saved me. And now I'm displaying his power, right? Well, you don't know how sick I was, how defeated I was. I was so messed up. I was so bound. But then Jesus rescued me. Listen, we all have a story. We've all been set free. God has touched each and every one of us. And that is so that we can go forth and proclaim those things. So that we can go forth and proclaim the good things of God. And when we do that, he displays his power through us. Amen? So I want to speak that prophetically over your life today. That you are going to walk in a new anointing 
and at a new level of displaying the power of Jesus everywhere you go. That even when you go to work tomorrow, that the power of Jesus will be displayed through you. You might not even have to say a single word, but the power of Jesus will be displayed. And even when you proclaim, as the scripture says, when you proclaim, the power will be displayed. Amen? So this is how we stay positive. We take every thought captive. We recognize the best in others. And then we remember what the word says. Amen? That is how you stay positive, is that very thing right there.